Peace, peace. Peace, family. Hope all is well. My name is Romel. That's a bar. Hello. Come on. Um, so I had another quick story that was on my heart to share for whoever's listening and whoever cares. Um, where do I start? I want to make sure that, um, I deliver this in the, the proper spirit. Um, let me, well, let me start here. Um, Hope for airplane, hope for plane. I live by an airport, so forgive me. So there have been a lot of, I feel like a lot of people I know right now are going through, including myself, right? Like going through a lot of trials and tribulations. And um, we're living in an interesting time right now. So I wanted to kind of give, it was put on my heart to to share a story, more of a rock bottom story, but also in hopes of giving some type of inspiration and um, hope, I guess, like specifically to creators out there, right? And artists. Um, as of lately, a lot of people, a lot of friends, a lot of loved ones I've been talking to the past few days and a lot of people have been hitting my line with um, a lot of their trials that they're going through and seeking, you know, I guess some sort of guidance or some sort of encouraging words. I don't want to say counsel because I don't I don't see myself worthy enough to counsel anybody, I need counseling, you know what I mean? But um, I say that to say there are a lot of people I know in my life who are experiencing trials, including myself. So I wanted to share a, a, a quick story about my lowest point where I feel like as a creative, right? Like creatively, I remember when I was in college and I guess college was the first time I ever experienced depression as an adult, I guess, you know, as a, as a child, as an adolescent, I don't know if I knew what depression was cause I didn't really have a reason to be depressed. You know, I had a mother who put a roof over my head, who kept me out of trouble, who provided, I had a father in my life who did the same thing. So I never really experienced depression until I went to college and I was quote unquote on my own, so to speak. And um, the first year of college was interesting because, you know, it, it was kind of like the party, the party year where I, <laughs> I, I, it's not that I had a fake ID cause that's not actual facts. Like the ID was real. It just wasn't me. So I was the fun provider for my friend group in college, right? Anybody know, uh, about us in Baco, you know, it was OTK. We was the out of town kids. So, um, we had fun our first year, right? Like partying, having fun, being away from our, our parents living on campus in the dorms, it was lit, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I think year two, that's when God really came into my life in a, in a, in a real way, as far as, you know, him revealing himself and, and me, the, the genesis of me starting to understand the reality of God, right? Cause it's one thing to believe, but it's another thing when the reality sets in so he started speaking to me in real ways and um i discovered what i thought at the time was what i wanted to do i found my purpose you know because the first year was more of a exploratory phase 
So the second year of college was when I discovered acting. And prior to college, you know, in high school, all I knew was hooping. I was just, I was just a hooper. Like I was just basketball. That's all I knew. You know what I mean? I, those are only talents I ever knew I had. But you know, when I met um, certain friends in college, and I took a, a few improv classes, I was like, "Wow, this is actually cool. This is actually fun." And the the mentality that I had, the approach that I had was, "Oh." Um, I want to actually be good at this. I don't like, I think I can actually do this. And I was like, you know, listening to a lot of Will Smith inspirational speeches and stuff like that. So I, you know, and people kept telling me, oh, you have a really good name. You have the name of a star, Romel Rose. So I was kind of gassed up a little bit. <laughs> and um, I got I had a lot of confidence. I was like, okay, I think I could do this. So I was training. And then I ended up discovering acting like school that summer. After my first year of college, I discovered an acting school, acting class, and I started taking classes and everything was just resonating. And I started studying the craft. I was like, oh, okay, this is what I want to do. Like, I feel like I can be successful at this. Um, so at the time, you know, going back to my second year of college, like there wasn't any film program at the, the Cal State that I was at. You know, we had theater, but theater is different than television film it's a different skill set um it's different training so i went and i auditioned for my first play and i ended up booking the lead role in the first play but going back to the depression i knew i didn't want to be there like i knew i didn't want to be at college i knew i wanted to study tv and film and i couldn't do that at, at the college that i was at so i wanted to come back to la and pursue a career in acting um, at the time, you know, family, friends, there was a lot of pressure for me to stay in school, but I knew I didn't want to be there. So I was kind of, you know, the second year was me just really living for other people, right? Because I was only in college because people kept telling me that I just needed to finish and they were, I was doing it for them. I wasn't doing it for myself. So I was like, you know what? I'm going a, I'm to a finish out this year and then you know, see what happens. So I finished out my second year, did the theater, trained, but then that summer going into my third year is when I really started training heavy. I started auditioning a little bit. I started booking some stuff. So my third year, going into my third year, that was when I had the most depression because I'm just like, I really don't want to be here. And classes got harder. I had to pick a major and anybody knows like your third year the classes get real and it's just like why am i even here so i barely finished my third year of college and then i was like you know what no matter what like i'm willing to sacrifice like i'm not coming back to the school like i will be homeless and pursue an acting career if that's what it takes um uh rojo what's the deal bro rojo below that's my dude right there um so yeah, where was I at? I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, so I left college <laughs> and I went super hard with the acting career. Um, and uh, I just made a decision, right? Like I was just like, this is what I want to do. And this is, I'm willing to, you know, do what I need to do in order to make it happen for myself. So I decided to take that leap of faith and pursue my, my passion. And um, sh <laughs> shortly after that, I discovered that the playing field wasn't quite equal for people who look like me in the industry, right? Uh, I, I started auditioning. Like, so I had previously, I was auditioning for like indie stuff which was cool, but then I start auditioning for like actual, like real pro not to say that indie projects aren't actual projects. That's not what I mean by that. Just, you know, bigger stuff and things were, was getting revealed to me. And I slowly noticed like, oh, I'm a black man in Hollywood. Like that's how they're looking at me. And I was never raised or taught, you know, about racism or about 
any of this stuff that's going on that permeates our community like i didn't know so when i got to hollywood and just learning how they put you in a type right like i was auditioning for roles that i didn't necessarily train for like i studied the craft but i'm not knowing that they're putting me in a certain box like i'm only going to audition for these type of roles so that was super frustrating because I'm just like, yo, like I can really act. I'm talented, but you guys are trying to pigeonhole me into these stereotypical black roles like the thug. Like I'm not even the thug type, but I, I guess the type like black, any black man in Hollywood, you're going to audition for thug type of roles. But I'm just like, that's so not me, but whatever. Um, so I, I slowly started to notice like, okay, like Hollywood is different. And then the stories that you hear about Hollywood, when you actually experience it, it's like, oh, okay, this is what's going on. So long story short, I had to take my career into my own hands, right? I had, to, I learned that I had to not only be a great actor or strive to be a great actor, I had to write I had to learn how to write, develop, produce, direct. And luckily the training that I got in acting class was so potent that it translated. Like we didn't just study acting, we studied human behavior. We studied storytelling. Um, it was always pushed to not wait on Hollywood. So, you know, I felt like God spoke to me and God told me that this is the work that he wanted me to do. So the will was always in me. Like I'm willing to do whatever it takes to see myself successful you know what i mean so i learned how to write direct produce and create my own content and i and just to sum it all up you know that that depression that i felt in college was because i i, I wasn't making decisions i was letting other people make decisions for myself but when i decided this is what i'm going to do and i'm going to make sure that it happens by any means necessary um, it's funny because earlier, early on in my career, I always thought, because I wanted to be on television, you know what I mean? Every actor wants to be on TV. Every actor wants to be, nobody puts baby in the corner. Yeah. So, um, Hey Barbara, how you doing? What, what was I saying? I forgot what I was saying. Uh, oh, I was making decisions for other people. You know, I wasn't living for myself and I wasn't making decisions based on what I wanted to do or predicated. I was basically letting other people control my life. So when I took control of my life, just like I took control of my career and oh, that's what I was saying. Early on in my career, I thought that I would, every actor wants to be on television and every actor wants to be in like movies. So I always thought, I would be on TV by auditioning and booking a role. And that's how I would end up on television. But it was ironic that um, a television company uh, actually reached out to me to premiere my my short film that I wrote, directed, produced, and starred in on their platform. So it ended up, I ended up getting on TV by something that I produced and directed. Um, all praise is due to Allah. So it's just ironic that it ended it ended up happening that way versus letting somebody control the outcome. I took control of my career and I was able to achieve the goal by taking control of my situation and not letting others control the situation. So hopefully that adds some inspiration to any creatives going through something similar, anybody going through similar trials of just feeling like locked in and feeling like you can't, you know, move, you can move, just get up. You know what I mean? First, it starts in the mind. You got to believe that you can get up. You know, your, your mind tells your body to get up. Your mind tells your feet to stand up, your legs to get up. First, you have to like tell yourself, this is what you're going to do. And then you have to believe it and then just get up and do it. It's simple, but it's not easy. So just wanted to give some encouragement because you know it's a lot going on in the world but we don't have to be victims to it either like we could make a decision and pray to to the god the almighty 
you know, God to help us navigate it. And if it's not his will, then he'll just redirect you in another direction. And you just have to follow that. But don't ever feel like hopeless or, you know, a quote by Brother Nori Muhammad that I love is that depression is, all depression is, is lack of gratitude. Like depression is lack of gratitude. So I was depressed. I was going through those things because I had a lack of gratitude for not only the life that God has given me, but the gifts that he's given me as well. Once I was able to tap into that and appreciate it and have gratitude for it, I was able to move on it and execute with God's guidance and permission. So love y'all. Peace and love. It was about 15 minutes. I'm going to make my exit now, and I hope you guys have a great day. Peace.